In Copenhagen, the harbor is like one big open air swimming pool. You can jump to the water in the middle of the city. It's clean water throughout. And where else can you find such a luxury in a big city? Oh, of course, in Aarhus, and that's also in Denmark. Denmark also has the world's best work culture. I never thought myself I would work in a corporation. I was this kind of renegade growing up. I wanted to be my own boss. But in Denmark, you have it so good as an employee that I literally changed my mind. It's friendly people, not complicated hierarchies, your opinion matters, it's relaxed, people trust you. Great to work. Speaking of work, I work in Maersk, which is likely Denmark's most famous company and a national pride the global integrator of container logistics, and is especially famous for its enormous fleet of big blue ships. Another famous fleet of ships from Denmark are the Viking longboats, because Vikings are from Denmark or were from Denmark, and from Sweden and Norway as well, you would say. And who doesn't love Vikings? In Roskilde, even, which is a city in Denmark, you have an incredible museum where you can see life-size replicas of the big Viking longboats, and a lot more. It's amazing. Also, Denmark has a unique holiday that is exclusive to the Kingdom of Denmark, and that's called the Store Bedes Day, or the Great Prayer Day. It's a day of rest, of reflection, and a popular date for kids in Denmark to get their confirmation. And usually, because it's in spring, you have beautiful weather and you can take a walk through one of Denmark's many beautiful green areas. We are so lucky in Denmark to have this holiday. Or, okay, sorry. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Mario and in this channel I help people living in Denmark to save money, invest well and live an overall rich life. But today I'll go through my love letter to Denmark, you could call it, with 100 points. and We have 95 to go. Point number six is that in Denmark everyone speaks English. I have been here for 12 years and I have yet to meet someone older than like 12 years that doesn't speak at least basic English. I have traveled myself to over 130 different countries around the world and I have never seen something like this. Just in case, I do speak, of course, Danish after this long, but again, it's such a blessing to have this level of English here. And it's good English as well. So for instance, Denmark is the home of Mats Mikkelsen, who is an incredible actor. And as far as I know, the only actor to play a villain in both James Bond and Indiana Jones, which are two of my favorite movies. Number eight is cycling. I absolutely love that in a city like Copenhagen, which is a relatively big city, you still don't need a car. You can basically cycle everywhere. It's super convenient and the bike lanes and infrastructure for biking make it super easy to do. Denmark is truly a bike first country. So much so that Denmark's own Jonas Vingegaard has won the 2022 Tour de France, a historic achievement that has made him a national icon here in Denmark. Also, the 2022 tour it had its start in Copenhagen and even had a section of the tour riding through the incredible Great Belt Bridge between Sinan and Fyn. And as I said, this Great Belt Bridge and also the Oresund Bridge, which connects Sjælland, which is the island where Copenhagen sits, to Sweden are two incredible achievements of engineering. I personally love to ride in a car or on a train through these incredible suspension bridges. It's just a sight to behold. Those bridges can be windy, and wind is something that Denmark has a lot of. So much so that the country has regularly produced between 40 to 60% of all its electricity via wind turbines, and has built a massive industry in the process. This wind power is one clear example of Denmark's leadership in decarbonization. So much so that Denmark is often held up as a model for other countries to follow in their transition to a low carbon future. On a completely different note, there's also some good food in Denmark. I personally love the open top sandwiches or small bread, which are a traditional Danish food which consists of a slide of bread topped with various possible ingredients. It can be cheese, meats or vegetables. And speaking of food, the Danish restaurant Noma has been the, for the past decade, I would say, considered the best restaurant in the world, only to lose its price in 2022 to, wait for it, another restaurant from Denmark called Geranium. At least when it comes to high-end cuisine, Denmark will have you covered. You can also pair this Danish food with Carlsberg's famous and legendary beer. I didn't used to work for Carlsberg before myself, and they produce high-quality leggers and all other types of beer varieties, exporting also the world over. You can find Carlsberg's everywhere. Speaking of work, in Denmark, you also have high salaries. Denmark has a high standard of living, and salaries are generally high for everyone. 
not only for, again, the fancy CEOs. This allows pretty much everyone in Denmark to live well. So much so that Denmark is considered one of the world's least unequal countries. This is, of course, not only per, again, the high salary, but also because of universal healthcare, free education, and other benefits that I'll touch on a bit later. Before I depart work, I just want to emphasize that it's common in Denmark for employers, and again, many companies, to provide you for with lunch, many times breakfast, and as well as other services as massage or fitness. Again, not every single company in Denmark, but it's a lot more common than not. You have great perks when you work in a place like them. Summer in Denmark is beautiful. You probably heard of winter and hey, you know, it's not a joke, but the summer makes up for it. You have those long days over spring and summer with this literally light all the time and people spring outdoors to enjoy sports and national parks and generally the beauty of the country. It's an incredible time. Kind of a random note, but the important for me is that in Denmark you also have very few mosquitoes when comparing to other countries. So it's almost impossible, I would say, to get a mosquito bite in the cities in Denmark, at least when you're not in the middle of the park. And well, of course, there are mosquitoes when you go to the woods. I have been bitten by mosquitoes here. It's nothing compared to what you see in other places. And specific to the outdoors, Denmark has a big sailing culture. Yes, I already talked about the Vikings. I also talked about Maersk. But there's a big recreational sailing culture as well. Many people own and sail their own boats and they take part again in many sailing activities and races. Speaking of the Vikings again, it seems they're olden times and voyages that still to this day, Greenland and the Faroe Islands are part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Both are unique and interesting destinations. Also unique is the island of Borholm, a scenic island in the Baltic Sea that has a claim to be the best island in the world. More on that in a future video I have in my pipeline. And definitely subscribe to the channel and you'll hear from me when these future videos come up. 24 is the Game of Thrones representation. I love the Game of Thrones and I tell you, this hit TV series had a strong Danish representation. Specifically, Jamie Nalaster and Euron Grager were played both by Danish actors, for example. On the fantasy story side, to continue on this theme, you also have Hans Christian Andersen. And it's Hans Christian Andersen is the author and poet behind stories like The Little Mermaid, The Ugly Duckling, The Snow Queen, which are beloved by children and adults all over the world. In Copenhagen, you also have Tivoli, which is a beautiful and scenic amusement park. It also has a specifically Hans Christian Andersen themed ride that my children especially love. It's one of the oldest and most iconic parks of its kind in the whole world. Another famous theme park in Denmark is Legoland, and it's a huge park in central Jutland designed around Lego bricks, which makes, you know, with rides made out of Lego and a cool section basically where you have the whole world built out of Lego. Again, my kids also love this one, and I'm sure you as well, if you grew up with Lego, will love it as well. And speaking of Lego, Lego is a Danish company. I grew up in South America, and I grew up playing Lego, and so did millions of kids around the world over, and still to this day, again, Lego is a big part of growing up and playing. Lego is now, of course, a famous brand, and I would say, along with Maersk, a source of national pride for the Danish people. The last company I want to touch on in this video is Novo Nordisk. So Novo Nordisk is another Danish company, another big Danish company that specializes in diabetes care. And it's not an understatement when I say that its products related to diabetes have empowered the life of millions of people that have this disease. Speaking of healthcare, you know, COVID pandemic. During COVID, during the hardest times in COVID, we still had it very good in Denmark, relatively speaking. You could always go out, even during the strictest lockdown, childcare and schools opened relatively fast. There was effective communication and we had a quick vaccine uptake. In the situation, it was a good place to be. 31 is that Denmark is a small country. This has many benefits, as for instance, small countries are historically better managed, and you can see that here again. But to me, it's most interesting that you can cross from one side of the country to the other side of the country in just like, one day, making it super easy for you to explore and experience all of what Denmark has to offer. And you can do this in the public transport, because the public transportation in Denmark is phenomenal. You have trains, buses, metros, ferries, and again, they are regarded as one of the best in the world. You can do all this, again, crisscross of the whole country just with public transportation. 
And especially, I can speak for Copenhagen, the metro is amazing. It has a big network, there are trains every few minutes, it's always there 24-7, it's never really crowded, or at least comparing to you know, other places I have been. You just make sure again to buy your ticket because there are these guys checking you out if you have the ticket almost every single time. Copenhagen Business School or CBS. CBS is the reason I came to Denmark. I studied in CBS and I made a whole bit about my um, very positive experience in the university that's going to be linked over here. CBS is Denmark's leading business school and it has an incredible campus. It's fun programs, a lot of extracurriculars, and it's free if you're a European citizen. And this is also amazing. In Denmark, you not only have free higher education, but you also get paid by the government to study. So it's not only a university like CBS completely free, but there's a system called SU that provides financial support for students pursuing higher education, making it easier for them you know, again, to focus on the studies. You finish school not in debt, if you're smart at least, and instead with a solid financial footing. Denmark is also world famous for its festive and joyful Christmas spirit. For people like me that come from the Southern Hemisphere, where we have Christmas in summer, or we would consider like in our summer at least, to come here to the Northern Hemisphere, when you actually have Christmas with darkness, with snow, with Christmas carols and Christmas markets, this at least helped me experience the real Christmas for the first time, the way it's supposed to be, and it's amazing. But unique to Denmark is the tradition of wild Christmas lunches. So these Christmas lunches are called the Julefrokost, and in many cases have wild parties, great food, desserts, games, presents, and a lot of alcohol. In this case, headlined by the schnapps. Now, I feel Denmark is very welcoming to outsiders, no matter what other people might be saying. To me, Denmark gave me free education, a corporate career, the possibility to form a family, to travel the world, and after a while, to become a Dane. So this is incredible, and I don't think this is appreciated enough. So forget about those headlines that say that Denmark is anti-immigrant and all that. If you are willing to work on it, you can make an incredible life here and be welcomed into the Danish family. Speaking of coming to Denmark, the airport in Copenhagen is amazing. It's close to the city, it's accessible by metro, it's super efficient for security, for passport control, coming in and out, it's fast, looks nice inside and offers a ton of routes to wander around the world. Definitely super solid. Number 40 is especially dear to me. Denmark is a safe country. Thankfully, you'll never be at risk in Denmark. You really can count on that. Your children will be fine, nobody's gonna hurt you, and this gives you an incredible peace of mind. Just make sure, of course, to lock your bike very well. Okay, back to Christmas times. Winter in Denmark can be super fun. Again, it's dark, it's long, it's cold, yes, but there's a lot to do from sledging to playing in the snow, ice skating, sometimes even in the lakes in Copenhagen, and a bit of cross-country skiing if that's your thing as well. We also have winter bathing, and this is the idea that you can dip into the cold waters of the sea in winter, again, for a dose of freshness, you could say. It's usually combined with a fix of sauna just afterwards, or in between, you can do sauna, water, sauna, water. And there are multiple winter bathing clubs in Denmark, and for instance, I'm a member of the one in Nistensbrugge in Copenhagen. Also in Denmark, we have the concept and lifestyle of hygge, the coziness of the soul, as it has been put many times. And hygge is this unique Danish atmosphere of candlelight, wool blankets, hot drinks, wood fireplaces, board games with friends. It's the way we go here, or the way we try to live here in Denmark, to actually enjoy the winter. And hygge is also partly about interior design. So Denmark and Scandinavia again as a whole, it's world famous for its interior design, with a focus on minimalism, natural materials, such again such as wool or blankets, and a love of fireplaces and comfortable spaces. Danish furniture specifically is also famous for its simplicity, for its functionality and quality, and we have very famous designers as Arne Jakobsen or Hans Begler. Denmark also has very high levels of home ownership. Lots of people own their homes in Denmark. You don't really need to be a specially well-off person to own your house or apartment. And there are many obvious benefits that come with this. There are many factors that play into these high levels of home ownership, but one would be how cheap mortgages are in Denmark relative to other countries. Again, because the economy of Denmark is so strong and has low debt, you can actually borrow money almost for free, again, at least up till 2022. Even now, that rates have gone slightly up, they're still lower than in almost any other place in the world. 
I also love that in Denmark, you don't need a car, at least if you live in a place like Copenhagen or Aarhus. The public transportation is system, as I said, is super efficient. You have the infrastructure to bike almost pretty much anywhere. So you can even skip the car altogether. So I have been living here for 12 years and I have never had a car. And you might ask, how do you transport your kids around the city then, if you don't have a car? Your answer is the Christiana bikes. So these are bikes with a big wooden box in front where you can actually put two kids and sometimes adults as well, all sitting together. You can see them all over town. And if you get one, just make sure you get three pairs of locks. Okay, what if you need a car? So Denmark has a very efficient and well-maintained highway system. So if you're living in Jutland and most likely then you do need a car, you have this highway system to rely on. You have smooth roads, little to no road damage, making the again travel very convenient and stress-free. My kids especially like the Blue Planet. So this is the National Aquarium of Denmark in Copenhagen. It's one of the largest and most impressive aquariums in Europe and it showcases a very diverse range of marine animals around the world. So there are hammerhead sharks, octopuses, sea otters, and thousands of fishes. We go the yearly pass and we go almost every few weeks. 51, so we're only halfway through. I love now then in Denmark the people look good. So Danes are physically attractive and they also dress nice. So much so that it pushes you as a person that comes to Denmark and want to look nice as well to take good care of yourself. And again, also to dress the part. My belief is that one thing that pushes for this is that in Denmark we have a very strong business culture. Denmark is known for its active and healthy lifestyle. So that is something that's very common here. You see many people do sports, again, fitness, yoga, again, all these activities to stay healthy and fit. Just walk around Copenhagen in like four o'clock, five o'clock, and you'll see thousands of people running around in the lakes, in the parks, and also in winter. And despite all these things going for them, Danes are humble. Danish people are also known for their humility, for their modest nature, to the point that humbleness, it's a very important part of the Danish culture and way of life. Speaking of humbleness, just look at the queen. So we have Queen Margrethe from Denmark, is widely regarded as being a warm monarch, friendly, approachable, and she's again very well liked by the Danish people. In a spin to this, Denmark is also a really progressive country, especially on gender equality and LGBT rights. This has a long story. Again, Scandinavia, and again, this goes beyond Denmark, has been more gender equal than other places since the Viking times. But let's highlight how gay friendly Denmark is. So Denmark, again, was the first country in the world to recognize the registration of same-sex partnerships, and that was back in 1989. It was also the first European country to ban slavery, which is a different story. Even then, Denmark can be very wild. Just look at the Roskilde Festival. It's a huge music festival with incredible parties, amazing vibe, alcohol flowing, and all in the context of great music. And then you even have Distortion. Distortion is a yearly like music festival in Copenhagen where one day a week, one different neighborhood of the city becomes a full-on party. It's like a carnival, but wilder. And it's a sight to behold, and it's super fun as well. Last on parties are the university parties. You have parties of students, that's kind of normal behavior. But in CBS, for example, where I studied, not long ago, until not long ago, the whole university campus became a club, so a party club every first day. I remember that, and it was wild. I mean, it's super fun. And again, it's a great thing to be a student in Denmark. Party-wise, you got yourself covered. And then there are the beaches. So Denmark, as I said, is a small country, but it has an insane amount of coastline, again, considering the size of the country, and which makes it, considering that the country is mostly flat, there are a lot of beaches to go. And combine that, again, with the clean water I mentioned at the beginning, and you can go swimming and some bathing to many places inside the cities and then also outside the cities, basically year-round if that's what you want. Again, there are beautiful beaches in Denmark. 61 is that Denmark is in Europe. So it's part of the European Union. And I tell you as a non-European, you know, Europe is great. It's amazing that you have the opportunity to move and work and travel to so many countries once you're in the EU. And that, that's super good. And just think about this, like flights in Europe are usually cheap. And if you live in Denmark, you can really have just a fun weekend in Prague if that's your thing. You can just go and eat a gelato or a cappuccino in Milan in just like a whim like this. It's really good stuff. But unlike other European places like Germany, the architecture in Denmark was not damaged by the World War II. In Denmark, you have very well-preserved buildings, castles, and a very strong cultural heritage. 
Speaking of which, Denmark has also many world-class museums and galleries, and that's including the Luciana Museum of Modern Art and the National Museum of Denmark, for example. Both are very highly rated. In the same line also, Denmark is full of nice design. So we talked about interior design before, but there's also the outside looking piece as well, you could call it. In the national Denmark ethos as a whole, you actually see minimalism, you see boldness in some cases, you see the clean lines, nice materials, elegance. And for elegance, I would highlight the Fredrikshberg Park in Copenhagen. There are a ton of beautiful parks in Denmark, but I especially like this one. It has all growth trees, big open spaces, hills, lakes, channels, and you can even look up to the zoo and see the elephants from the park, which is amazing. Now, and this can be controversial, Denmark also has the leader main statue. This statue is likely Denmark's top landmark, and while it underwhelms most tourists, it's an iconic part of the country. So much so that it has become like a tragic icon where explosions have happened. It got its head chopped off multiple times, it got bombed, and there's a crazy story which I'll touch on in an upcoming video. And again, if you want to see this upcoming video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you know when this video comes up. Back to architecture. Denmark is also an innovator in this space. So Danish architects have made innovating and cutting edge designs, including, for example, and famously, the Sydney Opera House and the Black Diamond Library in Copenhagen. In Denmark, there are also a ton of supermarkets. So in Copenhagen or Aarhus, you likely have the biggest supermarket density in the world, so you're never more than a few blocks away from one supermarket, and that is super convenient. And in the supermarkets and beyond, you can go and live without having to use any cash. I even forgot how cash looks like in Denmark. Again, it's super convenient, and while the rest of the world has been catching up on this, Denmark has been a leader in this cashless society for more than 10 years now, with mobile pay and the like being quite advanced already. And this leads me to number 70, which is that Denmark is a very digital country. So I have been here long enough, so I take MeetID, Ebox, Outla, the health system, the health records, all that for granted. But basically everything you can do online, it's basically almost everything that's covered. And it's seldom that you need to show up and do something in person or have to fill up a paperwork. And this is incredibly liberating and makes it so easy. I also love Denmark's parental leave rules. I got two kids myself and here, like the fact that I could take multiple months off and my wife even like more than half a year off each time and then have our income guaranteed during this period. And then also that we can come back to our job once you know, we go back to the office, that's amazing. And again, again, a lot of countries are trying to copy Denmark's approach on this, but I think it goes beyond the government saying, hey, do this. It's more like a cultural thing. Here it's taken for granted that after you have your baby, you have your time off, and then you come back to work. And I would say this supported work, this cultural support as well, encourages people in Denmark to have kids. And Denmark is full of kids. You could for sure look at the statistics, and I'm sure there are some other countries that have a lot more kids. But just walking in Copenhagen or other cities, you'll see so many families with strollers all over the place. So babies are coming. And again, you get paid to have kids as well, which is like a quarterly stipend. I and mean, on top of that, it's so again, super support. 73 is that once you, you know, go back to work and you have your kids already, you can have your kids go to daycare and kindergarten from six months and up to six years. And the price is accessible. There's likely a lot of places. And again, once you get to elementary school, that's even completely free, the public schools at least. Even the private ones are very competitively priced. Last on kids is that there are a lot of amazing playgrounds all over Denmark. Most of them are maintained and they're excellent and safe places to take your kids to play. I spend countless afternoons myself in playgrounds around Copenhagen. And if you ever want to meet me in person, if that's what we have to do, those are the most likely places you will go and find me. In all, Denmark is a quiet and easy place to live. It's even too easy, maybe, you know, it's, there's an overall lack of drama and lack of noise compared to other major countries. You can sit back and like, just relax. In Argentina, where I'm from, you know, that's definitely not the case. You can have more fun, maybe, but at least when it comes to, you know, drama, Denmark, you know, makes it really easy. 76 is that there are many Danish greats, but let me highlight two. And one is Tycho Brahe, you know, he's 16th century astronomer who has made precise observations of the stars and planets and laid the groundwork for discoveries in the field of astronomy. This is a huge guy. And the other one is Niels Bohr. So this is a 20th century physicist who has made groundbreaking contributions to the understanding of atomic substructure and quantum mechanics. Again, this earned him the Nobel Prize in physics. And this is like one of those once in a century brilliant people as well. 
Denmark also has low rates of infectious diseases. That's maybe the weather, you know, but you do feel safe to have a healthy environment to live in where there is a good support also network in case you get sick. Health was as well. It's important to know that according to various surveys, this mark also consistently ranks very high in terms of sexual satisfaction. You know, that's also important for your health. Plus, in Denmark and in the Nordics as well, we have a celebration called Midsummer, which is like the opposite of Christmas, so the longest day of the year, and where we in Denmark not only have a big party as well, but we also light enormous bonfires on the beach or in public spaces. I mean, it's the days are so long that it just makes it amazing. 81 is that something that we take for granted, but it's very important, and that is Denmark is a democracy, and a good spin at that. So in Denmark, the regions and communes, whether those are kind of the states and provinces and so on from Denmark, are super important, and that's great because then in Denmark, many decisions are made by those who are really closer to the people than, let's say, the national government. And related to this is trust. Trust is a fundamental part of Danish culture, and the country is known for its high levels of trust in its institutions and in each other. So this results in a lot less friction, and again, I don't think there even notaries in Denmark, it just makes it a really easy place to live. And for this, it helps that Denmark often ranks as the least corrupt country in the world. If it's not number one, it's normally close to the top. This means, again, less friction in everyday life. A richer country, and again, a trust in the government and its institutions themselves, which you don't see in other countries. Famous in Denmark as well is its universal healthcare. So again, Denmark provides free medical treatment for all citizens and residents regardless of income. In Denmark, you know that you will not go broke if you get sick, and that's a big deal after all. Part of the same welfare state is Denmark's flex security model. So here in Denmark, you have low unemployment, but at the same time, it's very easy to hire and fire people. So those in between jobs can get something called ECASE or job benefits for up to two years, so when they're in between jobs, and more support if they are poor. So again, this helps you, you know, be afraid of the worst case scenarios in case you get fired. And because of this, Denmark has a strong sense of community and social cohesion. You don't see or hear of class tensions, for example, here in Denmark. People know they're being taken care of, and those, of course, better off, know that they're paying an enormous share to support with their income taxes to support, again, this this model of country. This helps, again, to make Denmark the happiest country in the world, according to many rankings. So I'm a bit skeptical of this statistic myself. So I have lived in many places and I can't generalize that Denmark is happier than others. But I do understand that at least in Denmark, for most people, you just don't have the worries or problems that you have in other places. And that's 100% worth it. Also worth it is to have a strong currency. We don't have euros in Denmark, but we have the krona that is pegged to the euros. And this, and again, the high levels of income overall means that when you go out of Denmark and you go traveling, as I do a lot, you pay for quality without having to break your budget. Almost every other country in the world is cheaper than Denmark. Yeah, maybe Switzerland is more expensive, maybe Norway, but you know, by and large, everything else is cheaper. Kind of related to this is that in Denmark, it's easy to do business. You can open a business digitally, and in a matter of days, taxes and regulations can be just done super easy. And it's again, super straightforward and very competitive. Again, this for all types of businesses. You can also do your personal and business taxes, as I said, online. So this is very straightforward. And even for the complex cases, like investment taxes here are just ridiculous. You have setups to do all this automatically. 91, we're almost there. That is that despite its small size, Denmark is home to a rich and diverse range of wildlife. And this includes wolves, seals, and many species. Again, the long coastline also means that it's an attractive place for many marine species. And speaking about animals, Denmark is a leader in animal welfare, and it's a commitment to animal welfare that is very deeply embedded into the culture. So Denmark remains a beacon of animal rights advocacy throughout the world. Also in Denmark, you have that consumer welfare, you could call it, and this is a sense of strong consumer rights. Yes, it is very expensive to buy things here, but when you do something and buy, you buy something here, you have the right to get those things replaced within two years, in case these things break. For example, I always buy my shoes here because I know that if something happens to them because of normal like situation that shouldn't have happened, I get a new pair almost immediately. Last on animals is the Copenhagen Zoo. So my children love the zoo. We spend a lot of time in the zoo. And again, this is one of the oldest zoos in Europe and it's known for its focus on animal welfare and conservation. And yeah, we had a giraffe scandal a few years ago, but still, that we're kind of past ahead that as well. My children also love Halloween in Denmark and in Tivoli, for example, which we already talked about. The whole park gets like 
a million pumpkins all over the place and it's our favorite season to actually go and visit Tivoli. The kids also like to visit the pumpkin farms and to carve pumpkins and build like jack-o'-lanterns and again this is very common here, not even where I came from for example. Speaking of food again, Danish pastries are so famous that some pastries are just called Danish around the world, right? So my wife is much into pastries and her clear favorite is the seasonal fast allowance bole. Water in Denmark is great as well. You can easily live off tap water, which is just clean and drinkable, and it's a bit childish, yes, but it's overall fantastic. And at home, we literally just drink tap water with a soda stream machine, add an imbalance to it, and that's it. Just a weird thing is that in Denmark, in most restaurants, you actually need to pay for tap water. I just never get used to that. 98 is that if you want to say water in Italian, you say aqua, and hey, aqua is a Danish band. I grew up in the 1990s and Aqua was all the rage back then. I remember the songs Barbie Girl, Dr. Jones, I mean these were absolute hits. And I know there are better bands, there are singers and artists from Denmark, but at least you know throughout the world almost everyone knows these two songs. In Denmark things work. It's hard to explain this but again it's just less friction. When you are to have to do something you know that it's gonna be done. And in most cases again done well. So if you come from abroad this is crucial. And 100, we made it to 100. I just want to say that despite its size and not so many people, again, we're like less than six millions here, Denmark 100% punches above its weight. It's an incredible place, I'm happy to be part of it. And 101, because you know, again, there's always more love. In Denmark, things run on time. Danes are famous for their punctuality. People are never late, even near, even too early, so it's great, and that means that they need to finish this video now. Next up, you should definitely watch this video over here and learn more about how to have an amazing life in Denmark. Thanks for watching.